Hello, thank you for joining me. It's day two of our Iron Curtain vehicle rally around Staffordshire and Stoke-on-Trent. Got this nice little bumper plaque to put on my car and uh, quite a lot of the other cars have got it. So, here's my larder. We've met this morning at the Marriott Hotel near Kiel University. I didn't stay here, I stayed down at the North Staffordshire Hotel by Stoke-on-Trent Station just because I wanted to stay at a railway hotel. Some people have camped, some people stayed here, some people were local. So we've come from various different places but we're all meeting here and we're going to go for a drive up to Joddle Bank. So I've never been there before, I'm really looking forward to it. So let's just have a quick look at the cars we have here. We've got some two two-stroke Trabants, we've got a Fiat 126 or a Polsky Fiat. Um, what else have we got? We've got there's um, a Moscovich, another Trabant, so nice to see another Russian car, a Wartburg, um, more Trabants, more Wartburgs, and keeping in with the Russian theme, we have a Zafrajet, and uh, we also have a Barker, so I'll put one in front so you can see it. Oh, and I'm not sure if um, this car's coming with us, but it's certainly not Eastern Block, but it'd be a nice addition. Morris Minor, so um, I always probably if I hadn't got into Eastern Block cars, I might possibly be driving around in one of them or a Marina. Um, but I got into Eastern Block cars, yeah, we have a Barkers and a Zafrajet. So, um, what we're going to do once we've uh, all finished talking and we're all ready, we're going to go for a road run up towards Joddle Bank. So, um, it's going to be a good day.
So we've arrived here at Jodrell Bank. The telescope is where well, you can just see a bit of it, but we're going to have a proper look at that later. So here we have a fantastic lineup of cars. My Lada joined by a few Wartburg, Strabant, Samoskovich, and uh, DKW and Zafrajet. Walk over here, we get a bit of a view in the distance of all the cars, and you might see a bit more of the um, telescope. Just there, you can see the club members of the RTA club are taking pictures of their cars against this backdrop. So what we're going to do, um, there might be one or two more cars to join us yet, you never quite know. Um, we're going to go and have a look around the Jodrell Bank. Oh, I think I can hear a train. Can't see it. Okay, there's a there's a railway line just the other side of that field. I could just hear a train going past, but um don't actually think there's going to be any trains in this video, but we might hear the odd train pass now. And then there we are, we get more, see more of the... The telescope's there behind us, so yeah, what, what a great lineup of Eastern Block cars. So now we're going to have a look around the site. I've just paid my entrance fee to Jodrell Bank. The telescope's over there, but as you come in through the ticket booths, they take you in this direction. So I thought we'd have a, have a walk this way into the arboretums because I always do like um, any form of gardens or arboretums so we will, we will obviously go and see the telescope but first I understand they're doing some building work they're building another discovery centre so it's not finished yet but it looks like quite an interesting piece of architecture so what I thought we'd do is take you around here we'll have a look at that then we'll go and see the telescope itself. So that's why there's all this Harris fencing around here. Um, so the building we're looking for is behind behind there somewhere. So um, it's, it's funny because you think you come to see a telescope, but I feel like I've come to well an arboretum. I have come to an arboretum. Come for a, so you know if you come here, it's not you don't just come and look at a telescope. You actually get quite a nice walk outside in amongst the trees which you know is something I always enjoy doing. Uh, we are going to head off in that direction. That's how it's more going. I just wanted to show you just seen this plant here. Just look at that, I just thought not not entirely sure what plant it is but it just looks really nice so yeah. And then we shall head off down here where towards where the building work is taking place. So as we come along this path just here, you can see this path looks fairly new. We've got various astronomy pictures on display, so a bit of an outdoor art gallery. Some very nice pictures, and I quite like these benches. They're kind of a cross between a bench and a summer house, because obviously it is a bench. You couldn't really call it a summer house, and it's not really a rain shelter, because if I sat here, I'm kind of sheltered, but my legs are outside, but I think they're quite nice benches. I wouldn't mind one at the end of the garden. Anyway, let, let's go and have a look at this um, this building work they're doing, because from the pictures I saw, it looks quite interesting. Right, okay, I can see some work. I can see a big concrete building with a fence on the roof. So I think the idea is you're actually going to be able to, whether you'll be able to, it's going to have a grass roof. So we're talking of you know, something very modern and um, striking, something that will sort of blend into the landscape nicely. So as we get to here, you can see the house fencing and everything. Well, look, look at that, that's the, the building, the building. So it looks as though, um, almost looks a bit like, um, I don't know if anyone when they were little used to watch Teletubbies, it looks a bit like the Teletubby house. So whether we're actually be able to walk over the roof, I assume that'll all be grass. I'm not sure, but I think that's quite cool. So then they have got a huge arboretum. Unfortunately, most of it's closed today because they're doing some tree work, I was told, which is a bit of a shame, but, you know, from someone who has worked um, in countryside management, I understand things like that have to happen, and they can't take chances. So we're not going to go into the arboretum today, but if you do come here on a day when that's open, I'm sure you have a very pleasant walk in that direction. So this is there. So it's like, yeah, there's an entrance there, and there's a big hole there. So that's probably another entrance. So... I'll, I have to come back here. Everywhere I go these days, it's like, oh, I'll have to come back and see that when that's done. But, you know, that's that's nice because whenever I go somewhere, it is always nice to come back and, you know, revisit in a few years' time. So we will we'll come here again. I'm going to now follow this path down through this open part of the Arboretum. And we're going to go and see what we have come here to see, the main, the really, really big thing, the 
telescope. So let's walk through the woods and find the telescope at Jodrell Bank. So we just had a look at the um, Arboretum. We're now going to go into here, into the orrery, because this is quite cool what they've got here. If you look up there, there's like a model of the solar system. That's the sun, that's the earth, and that little white dot is the moon. And we can actually set the solar system in motion, because as you can see right now, it's a stationary solar system. The solar system isn't stationary. There's a big lever here, and it's always like it where I can get my hands on. Turning this lever, if you look up there, the solar system is starting to turn. So I'm just, I've just like um, left my hand off it. It's now been set to automatic. So if you look now up there, there's the, right above me. It feels really weird looking up at the Earth as if I'm in space. But yeah, this is. There's the Earth with the Moon spinning around it, and um, you can see various other planets up here. I assume that's probably Jupiter, that one, because it's the biggest. I also do find it quite fascinating, if you look above, the clockwork mechanism that is setting the solar system, this or orrery solar system we have in motion, I find that quite fascinating, seeing all those tiny little cogs which is operating it, but there's, there's on the arm where Earth and the Moon is, there's, you know, quite a few of them. So that's pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to continue looking around the site and um, we're going to go and have a look at the most important thing here, the Jodrell Bank. That was very interesting in there, seeing that model of the solar system. I, I did also really like the, the clockwork side of it. I, I do find things like that fascinating. But now... Let's go and see what we actually came here to see. Jodrell Bank. Well, when I say Jodrell Bank, isn't actually this telescope. It's called the Lovell's Telescope. Jodrell Bank is the site, the place we are now. The um, research centre is Jodrell Bank. Um, the telescope's called the Lovell's Telescope. It's not the only telescope here. There's quite a few smaller ones, um, but it's the Lovell's Telescope. You can see from everywhere. If you look across the field, you may just be able to see there's a couple more telescopes over there. So let's go and have a look at this amazing piece of, um, well, it's an amazing structure. It's pretty impressive what it's done. So yeah, it's a really fascinating piece of history. And it's, it's still in everyday use. It, it's not just um, a piece of um, museum history. It's something that's, you know, every day it's working. It's, it's you know, it's been here since the 1940s so it basically the reason it came into being was i say it's the Lovell's telescope a man called Sir Bernard Lovell he was doing research into what goes on in space and the problem he was finding was he was doing it at Manchester University and at the time a tramway went, went right through the middle of Manchester University not today's modern Metrolink but the original Manchester tramway and when the tram's pantographs arced on the wires that interfered with his research his telescopes were picking that up so he needed somewhere a bit more quiet so someone said well I know some land up at Jodrell Bank you'll be able to do a bit of research there for a couple of weeks so you know that happened and then this happened um, so it's really quite fascinating but one thing I want to show you if you have a look um, once, once everyone else has had a go we've got to do this see, see there's a mirror there and a mirror there they're sound they're, they're not optical mirrors um, as in you're not going to look in them and see yourself, but they're sound mirrors. So if you talk like those people are there, they will be able to hear those people. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to wait, um, or I will wait, and I, I shall have a go at that myself, and then we'll get on with the rest of the video. probably sounds like I've got a microphone but I haven't, I'm speaking into this dish and it's reflecting to the dish behind the camera and um, this is 
an example of a whispering dish and how it works. That was quite fun, I enjoyed doing that. So let's now go and have a good look at this telescope. So Bernard Lovell was given permission eventually to build this telescope. He was given a certain amount of money to spend and he was told not to overspend, but you know, as with um, projects, inevitably he did overspend. But you know, what happened was they weren't best pleased that he had overspent on this huge piece of equipment, but he redeemed himself because during the time when there was, you know, the space race and um, America and Russia wanted to be first to land on the moon, the Russians launched their mission. Now, there were various crash landings on the moon, but the Russians were the first to actually land safely on the moon, not with people, but with a machine, and they, they took pictures. And what happened was, with this telescope, he managed to interfere and basically intercept and get those pictures that the Russians wanted kept secret. So we were able to publish the pictures, the Russians probably weren't best pleased, and uh, he kind of redeemed himself for overspending. Let's just have a look how big it is, so you can see now, you can see this bit here, so it turns like this, it can oscillate or rotate around, it's really quite fascinating. See this, it looks like a building up there, there's one of them on each side. Now, they don't look that big from down here, but if you think about it, that's one, two, three, four, five, and then quite a bit more storage. So that's like three houses on top of each other. So, you know, it's massive. It's You can see it from just about everywhere. You know, if you go up to somewhere like Mocop Folly, you'll be able to see this. And um, if you go up various other hills around here, such as Shuttling's Low, I'm pretty sure on a clear day, you can see it. You can't miss it. It's, it's a pretty big telescope. Um, as I said, there are other telescopes on the site. There's one there. Now, this building here it might not be the prettiest of buildings but it's a fairly important building because it's the control room so in there now I can't actually see them but there is someone in there now controlling it and every now and then it does actually move and this path here this might look like just a path from the building to the um, telescope itself but it's actually, there's actually a tunnel beneath here and it carries all the wires and everything from the building to the telescope if you have a look here you can see, you know, like a, a light brick, so that lets light down into the tunnel. So, let's have a closer look. Now, I said earlier on in the video, we were in the car park and I heard a train go past, so there wouldn't be any railways in this video. Well, that's not what you're thinking when I say railways, but if you have a look at this, you can see there is a sort of a railway, because it's on, its wheels sit on rails, so it's a perfect circle of a railway. And the question is, do we say, it's one very, very wide railway, you know, as in probably more than twice the width of Brunel's seven foot and a quarter inch broad gauge. I think the, the widest railway in Britain that's currently out of action is the Cairngorm Funicular Railway, which is two metres wide. Um, I went on that a few years ago, but as I say, it's currently out of action. So that was the widest railway in Britain. I mean, yes, I know it's not a conventional railway and it doesn't carry passengers from A to B, but then if you actually look at it, is it a really wide railway or is it actually two parallel narrow gauge railways because there's two sets of rails on each side and you can probably just see here on the feet you can see these rather large wheels so is it two narrow gauge rails with rather heavy duty rails and then another narrow gauge railway in fact probably there's a third in the middle but i kind of quite like to think of it as from here it just looks like one ridiculously wide railway and if we come out here you can see into the dish itself dish of the telescope so I don't know too much about all the ins and outs of how it works but you know you cannot fail to be impressed by the sheer scale of it um, I mean yes I've seen tower blocks and taller structures but just it's like you know a bit like when I was little I used to like playing with connects it's like a giant connects kit you know what if I was um, if I still had my connects if I was still 12 years old, I know when I get home, I would be getting them out and I probably would start trying to make a model of this. It's just amazing. Look, I'm standing right here now in the middle, not in the middle, but looking up at the dish of the Lovell telescope. I, th I think it's an amazing feat of engineering. I mean, I'm not too interested in space and that, but I appreciate, you know, some people are, but I, I just think it's, to me, the most interesting thing is the structure. It's just so huge 
and um, the fact it's, it's in use all the time. Earlier on, it was turning around. Um, doesn't it, when you stand, it, it's not like it goes spinning around like a roundabout. It moves really quite slowly, but it's, it's visibly obvious. And you couldn't see into the dish earlier. The dish was more, if we say now it's like this, it was perhaps more like that. So it, it's a, f a fascinating building. So I think um, that brings us to the end of today's video. And uh, for this weekend, this IFA weekend, we've had up in the Stoke-on-Trent area. Um, thank you very much to the organisers, not just for this weekend, but for the one we had up in the northeast a few weeks ago. Thank you to the IFA committee for organising two fantastic weekends. There will be some more of these weekends coming in the future, so we'll, um, I'll enjoy visiting them and making more videos. And um, So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, share, subscribe and comment. And um, from what must be the biggest telescope, certainly in the UK, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.